South Korea is now fully getting involved in a way that I don't think any of us kind of predicted. And before we break that down, there's a few things you need to know. In the past just even five days, we've heard a lot of different information stating that Russia did indeed bring North Korean troops to Russia to train them to use them against Ukraine inside of Ukraine or in the Kursk region. Depending on which report you read, you've probably heard 1,500, 2,700, 10,000, 11,000, or 12,000. That number does kind of go back and forth depending on which source you're at. South Korea said it's closer to 12,000, but then they came back and they said, oh, that 12,000, only about 1,600 of them are the top of the line special forces that are like super duper trained to the best that North Korea can offer. And while it now looks like South Korea would be interested in sending some of their troops to Ukraine not to fight though. And this is where things get interesting. They want to send specialists that are able to, once these North Korean special force officers get captured as POWs or if they run away, they want to be able to interrogate them. The report goes on to say that the South Korean specialist will be in charge of the interrogation or will provide interpretation services in case North Korean officers or soldiers are captured during the Ukrainian war and need to be questioned. And they'll also be in charge of follow-up measures in case they want to defect and wish to go to South Korea. You heard that. They don't want to go to Ukraine to fight North Korea. They want to take in those North Korean soldiers, help them defect, and get to South Korea. But the report doesn't end there. It states that the South Korean specialists would then interrogate these guys and get all the information and provide that information either to Ukrainian officials or NATO members, adding that it would be helpful in enemy tactics to understand the actual operation methods of North Korean combat units by obtaining related information. Now, I need to add that there's been no decision on this right now. It's just a conversation that South Korea is having. But there are other conversations going on. Just this morning, South Korean officials called out the Russian ambassador and told him to come here because they want an immediate withdrawal of North Korean troops out of Russia. This was a meeting once again between the Russian ambassador and the vice South Korean foreign minister. And in the conversation, things got a little weird. So the South Korean vice president said that they're condemning in the strongest terms what North Korea is doing by putting troops in Russia because it poses a grave security threat. And he's not referring to just the security threat of South Korea. He's referring to Ukraine and the rest of the world. Because yeah, when you put boots on the ground and someone else's war, you're involving several countries into this. Now it's gotten to the point to where the NATO Secretary General, Mark Rutte, even stated, North Korea sending troops to fight along Russia in Ukraine will mark a significant escalation. But back to the Russian ambassador who said that South Koreans say one thing, then the Pentagon says it has no confirmation on such statements. There is a lot of contradictory information and it must be treated as such. So I don't know if he saw what he did there. He didn't deny that North Korean troops are inside of Russia. Instead, he turned everyone else's words against them by saying that, I mean, you guys are all, you know, giving conflicting information. So who knows? Which makes the conversation between the Russian ambassador and the South Korean official extremely like, wait a minute, what? When there's so much information out there, we've seen videos, there's been satellite imagery, there's a lot that has been confirmed that this has happened. Plus, remember, we have confirmation that North Korea is sending weapons to Russia. But what else did we expect from Russia, right? They were never going to tell the truth. They weren't going to come out and be like, oh yeah, we've got North Korean troops here. Oh yeah, 18 of them ran away, but we caught them. They would never come out and say that. Which, by the way, according to Russia, yeah, they caught those 18 North Koreans that ran away. They caught them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's done. But the bottom line is this, and I need you to understand this. This is getting bigger, and it's getting bigger fast. It's becoming quick. As soon as it's been confirmed that North Korea has boots on the ground inside of Ukraine fighting for Russia, we're going to be seeing a lot of things happen at once. And I don't know how that's going to go down. 
And I'm pretty sure right now world leaders didn't see this coming to the point to where I think they're all like, wait a minute, what, what is happening here? So what is probably going to happen would probably be South Korea is going to send officials to NATO to give information about North Korea. South Korea really does not want to get involved. They don't want to send troops to Ukraine to deal with all this stuff. But if they can go to NATO and get some kind of, I don't know if a sanction mission or something like that, to be allowed to go in just to not fight, but to be, I don't know, an interpreter or a translator or something, they might do that because they are going to get a lot of information. And I'm sure that these North Korean soldiers have no idea what's going on in the battlefield. They've probably been lied to this entire time and they think that this is going to be a cakewalk. And as soon as they find out it's not, they're going to see more and more of those North Korean, whether they be soldiers or special forces, defect or run into Ukraine and be like, yo, take me. I don't, I don't want to deal with this. I mean, we already saw 18 and they technically haven't started fighting yet. And the hope would be is that Ukraine would be able to get some intelligence from the South Korean officers interviewing the North Korean ones to the point to where they can shut this down fairly quickly. Because if 12,000 North Korean troops are truly fighting in Ukraine, this will be a red line that a lot of the world will not overlook. And it could become something very big. And I'm not telling you this to scare you. I'm just giving you the realistic side of this. When you have another country's army get involved with another country to take over another country, that's where bigger wars start. And once again, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to give you the realistic information out there. It's not a good situation at this time. But I want to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comment section below, and be sure to follow me for more.